Hi, I'm Holly, and welcome to Project Strange. Lots of questions surround the structures in our world, such as who made them, how they made them, and why they made them. And Project Strange is our attempt at finding these answers through understanding structural engineering. In this episode, we're trying to understand basic structural elements. But first, let's talk about history. Having four walls, a floor, and a roof are basic human needs for a reason. Construction dates back to early caveman times as a response to needing shelter from the elements. Thinking back to the very first form of shelter, two cavemen definitely realized that they could put leaves over their heads to shade them from the sun or to stay dry from the rain. And it's only escalated from there. Having shelter can mean the difference between life and death. In fact, the first rule of survival is to build a shelter. To get specific, this dates back to the Neolithic period, specifically to what we now call the Neolithic Longhouse, and around 5000 to 6000 BCE in Central Europe. This was a long structure built by the farmers of the time, which was the longest standing structure of its time in its era. The longhouse was a rectangular structure, being about 5 to 7 meters wide and 20 to 45 meters long. The walls are made of something called wattle and daub, which was essentially just woven lattice wood strips held together by a mixture of clay, wet soil, sand, wood, and usually animal dung. Ugh. Gross. In the longhouse, most of our modern structural elements are present here. Anyways, now I'll pass it off to Peyton with the interview. So, what is basic struct or what are basic structural and elements? <laughs> what are basic structural elements? Basic structural elements starts from your footings. Your footings come up to walls or piers which then go into suspended slabs like we have over our head. So everything above us is essentially suspended from one structural element to another, and the beams overhead are carrying those loads. They could carry all of the cars that are parked up there? And the cars being a live load and there's dead load. You can see they've done an upgrade here. They had a steel deck poured on these lateral steel beams that's transferring the loads to our outside wall. This is our foundation wall, which is a poured concrete with reinforcing, and then it's transferring over to steel columns, which this is called HSS, hollow structural steel, okay. that transfers it down to a footing. We have finished concrete above our head, so we know that they had formwork in this place, and there would have been forms that would have temporarily held that wet concrete that eventually got pulled out. So because it's smooth like that, we know that was wet concrete. You can actually see the, sh the four by eight sheet of plywood that was okay, part of that yeah. formwork that came down and they cleaned it up so the concrete was able to stay overhead mm -hmm. while that concrete was cured. Whenever we have columns like this that go down to a footing, there's a mass concrete structure, concrete block with reinforcing steel, that that's transferred into the live earth. And in this case, there's a lot of soft ground in the market, so there could be piles under it, okay. or it could be, depending on the load calculations for this building, the soils could handle a certain amount of kilopascal, how much load that soil can handle. The importance of base or structural elements is for the safety of the general public. Mm -hmm. Engineers are, are required and taught to check all the things, to make things foolproof, to make it so that someone driving in here with their car is not jumping on the curb and hitting people, that's engineered. Mm -hmm. Making sure there's railings capable of handling the loads of a vehicle coming into it. Right now we're below grade, mm -hmm. so we know everything below us is we're sitting on the ground. And as we come up here, it goes from a slab on grade to a structural element that we have underneath us mm -hmm. that's transferring those loads again to the sidewalls, to the columns and transferring it to the ground. And now we're up onto a suspended slab. And you can see the engineers has designed this so that there's curbs. We have windows that let the elements of wind and air through, but we have yeah. curbs that prevent human error of mm -hmm. driving off the edge of this parking yeah. garage. So you can see here the suspended slab above us. And then what we have here is, is structural beams mm -hmm. that are transferring the load to our outside columns that's carrying the weight of these slabs. So these slabs are carrying our loads this way to our beams and then our beams are transferring it to that column and that column. It's taking all the load of the traffic above us. And then it's also how many floors are in this parking garage? Like three, four? I think there's three or four. And so these are also carrying all of the other? Every other load. So if you look at this in a drawing and you cut it up like a piece of cake, mm -hmm. those columns carry all the way up every single floor. They're very rarely are they offset, and when they're offset, there's structural elements that have to, additional design that has to come into place. And this is where you have an architect that creates these very elaborate designs, and engineers have to take that elaborate design 
and turn it into something that's safe for the public. There's the joke in the industry, the sky hook. And like sometimes you, you get in these odd situations. How are we going to get the concrete up there? Or how are we supposed to get the beam up there? Or it's hanging over a cliff edge? Or it's how are we supposed to get there? And the joke is the sky hook. Well, you grab a, the sky hook's going to come down and pick up your bean and place it. But it's impossible, right? So coming up with methodologies and often the methodologies to finally build the completed structure is a structure on its own. In order to place the suspended slab ahead above us, to pour that mass volume of concrete wet in this location. You have to make a structure to hold We that. have to make a structure yeah. to pour the structure. Mm -hmm. Where does a crane have to sit mm -hmm. to carry a beam up is its own engineering. That crane, depending on that load that we need to carry up, it has a certain amount of load that it's spreading into the earth in order to carry that heavy beam. So, so the parking this is, garage. this is what you're working on, top secret? Is that it? Oh yeah top secret information. You have to bleep all of this out. Yeah, yeah. They won't let us talk about This is the, the rooftop of the parking garage. As you can see this curb, this is what you call a parapet. Every build, every building has a parapet. This parapet is structurally part of this parking garage because it won't let a car drive over the edge. This metal is just the flashing preventing the water from going in the top oh, of it. Gotcha. So if there was freeze and thaw, you don't want water going in there, it could yeah. blow out your wall. There's building code requirements that this gets grandfathered in that to maybe today's designs, it's not good, but sometimes if the, as, as the, stru the structure has to be monitored that it meets structural integrity as the years go along, because you can't just have a car go over because the building got old. Engineering is cool! So basically, a structural element is a segment of structural engineering where you break down complex structures into their simple parts and mechanisms. This can include roofs, foundations, exterior structural walls, floor, ceiling slabs, exterior glass and mullions, columns, beams, shafts, elevator cabs, and other load-bearing components. These can further be broken down into lines, surfaces, or volumes. Lines meaning beams, posts, struts, ties, or the lattice in the wattle and daub. While surface elements are walls, slabs, and membranes. If you think about it, we're all just Neolithic longhouses with wattles, daubs, and membranes. Damn, that was deep. Does your brain feel bigger after this? I know mine does. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Remember to smash that like and subscribe button on your way out. And as always, enjoy the process. It is hot out here. I know. Oh my gosh. I'm like sweating, I'm hungry, I'm dehydrated. <laughs>